Hello, I'm going to tackle something a little bit different today. Um, for those of you that uh, follow my YouTube channel, you probably noticed that uh, it's been a little bit quiet over the last two or three weeks. And um, the reason for that is um, I haven't actually been able to produce any video because my computer here, this uh, Apple Mac, uh, has reached its one terabyte limit and I've basically run out of disk space. Now, um, although I do um, back this up with a time capsule, um, really, um, I, don't, I don't have any way of um, archiving video off at this point in time, so there's a whole bunch of stuff I need to do to take care of that in the future. Uh, but anyway, what I thought I'd do um, is um, do an upgrade on this Mac, and I thought while I was at it, although it's strictly not, not strictly electronics, um, I figured what we'd do is um, tear it down, have a look inside it, and see, um, see how these things are put together, um, and also do a mod. Now, um, the mod, uh, what I've got here, uh, so currently the, the, the Mac has got a one terabyte um, hard drive uh, built into it um, and it's internal to the case. Uh, I'm going to replace that with, um, with a two terabyte uh, hard disk. I bought this the other day um, and so we're going to replace that. But I'm not just going to do that. The problem with um, well, these aren't particularly recommended for um, uh, Macs and the reason for that is, is they're, they're more, more energy efficient. They tend to spin down the disk a lot more. So for an operating system drive these are a little bit slower. Um, and obviously, because they because they they're, the power saving spins the drive down uh, a lot more, then uh, they're not the perfect drive. However, that's not really a problem in this example because I'm not only going to put one drive. I'm actually going to put two drives in, and I'm going to attempt to do a non-Apple mod and put this um, SSD um, uh, 250 250 gigabyte S SSD in, into the um, into the Mac as well, and actually boot the operating system of this. Now the issue with doing that is um, in the in the default configuration, everything is on its primary drive, which means um, the um, operating system, the applications, and the data in broad terms. And uh, what I really need to be able to do is no way my data is going to fit on this drive. And actually, I don't really want my data, which I'm changing all the time on this drive, to 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 make the best get the best life out of these SSDs. Uh, you want to do as, as little uh, writes as you possibly can, you know, within reason. I mean, these, these are pretty good nowadays, but, um, but nonetheless, the less writes you do to it, the better. Um, the Apples don't seem to have a swap partition, so unlike Linux, so, um, so that's not going to be an issue. Um, but basically what I've got to do is I've got to move, um, get my data, which is about um, 960 gigabytes of, uh, sorry, 960, uh, yeah, 960 gigabytes of data is in my user folder. So that's my videos, my images, documents, all that kind of stuff, projects, desktop, all that kind of stuff. So I've got to get, first of all, get that data off, off of the computer onto this thing, onto this drive. Um, I've got to get a bootable operating system onto this drive, and then we've somehow got to get both of these installed into that into that computer. So that's the goal. Uh, what I thought I'd do first of all, um, I'm going to use the camera here. I'm not going to try and use the desktop screen capture because of uh, limited space because we'll be working on it. I'm just going to reposition the camera and then, sh then give you a quick uh, overview of um, the disk space utilisation on this computer so you can see where we're starting from. Okay then, so uh, analysing this software, so I um, apologise for the image quality, I'm actually using the camera here and um, just, just um, getting it on the screen, so um, apologise for the uh, image quality. So the first thing I would do is um, I'll point you at a piece of software which I, I found and just used on, um, uh, from the App Store. It's a free app and it's called um, uh, Find Space and it's by John Holdsworth. So John, thanks very much. If you did get to see this video, I appreciate it because this tool was... Uh, Pretty, pretty useful to help me identify what was going on with my disk space. And uh, I've run that tool already and you can see there, I'm not sure how well this will uh, will come out. Let me see if I can zoom in a little a little bit more there. Yeah, sorry about the kind of grainy. So I'm going to reposition that a little bit. Not really. Get lots of reflections off the, off the computer. So sorry about the quality of this. But basically you can see there that um, you know, I don't have a, a massive amount of space used by um, about 26 gigs for applications, uh, but there's 980, uh, 960 gigabytes in use here for my video content. So uh, that's the first thing we've got to try and uh, video and uh, image, image and document content, predominantly video, of course. Um, so that's that's the first thing to do is to now I've, I really need to move this uh, move this uh, onto or take a backup copy of it on, onto that drive. Okay, so under applications, we're going to go into utilities, and, uh, and a pretty, pretty important utility we're going to have to use here is the disk utility. And I just thought we'd uh, have a quick look at the current configuration of the disk. Um, you can see there, let's uh, just zoom that in. So there you can see, that's the, uh, 
the standard disk utility. Uh, you can see I've got a one terabyte drive. For, for what it's worth noting, this, this is the model of the Mac where the, this was a recall and uh, Apple actually wanted me to take this computer uh, into an Apple store and have this drive swapped. Um, just the inconvenience of, uh, of moving the computer and being left without it, because I don't think they do it while you wait either. Uh, I just decided not to, and the drive's been pretty reliable. So as well as upgrading the, the um, space, I, you know, it, I, ha I know I have to do this because that, that drive may well be unreliable. Anyway, you can see there, it's the standard um, drive, the single drive in there. You can see the capacity is 999 gigs, and I've currently got 21 gigs free. So uh, I, I've run out and hit all the limits. Um, now, another important thing to, um, to note when you're going to mess about with computers in this way, uh, you know, this is an obvious point, but I'm going to make it anyway. Make sure you have a backup. Um, you know, you break this stuff, um, you're going to lose your data. Uh, now, I've got a time machine, a standard time machine, um, back up here. And you can see here, um, hopefully, I'll open this. Uh, my last backup was relatively recent. Um, uh, 24th of August, uh, today at 14.05. So a uh, little, little under an hour ago, it's due, due at um, uh, three o'clock, the next backup. Uh, I don't think much has changed, but uh, I'm gonna let that, um, I'm just gonna take a backup now. Um, how do I do that? I think I just choose the menu item up here. So I'm gonna start a backup. Preparing backup is what you're saying. Okay, so, so that's off now. I'm just gonna let that back up and just make sure that everything's backed up and then uh, we'll come back. Okay, uh, well, that's, uh, while that's backing up, I'm just gonna talk very briefly about the, the general approach. Um, so um, in, term, in terms of the tools, so obviously we've got this uh, SSD drive and we've got the, um, the Seagate, um, rep uh, sorry, the um, replacement um, data drive here. Um, as well as that, I've got these. Uh, got a, an additional SATA cable because we're putting two drives in, so presumably we'll need one of these. Um, I've got a, um, uh, a SATA power splitter uh, cable, and uh, I've got an adapter which I think I'll need. Now, I've, I've guessed all of this. I haven't actually seen inside. I have had a look at, around on the web, and there's lots of um, um, videos and documents that show you how to do this stuff. Um, but they're not really clear, so I'm going to try and do much more, get much more detail around, uh, you know, what's actually involved in doing this. Um, the most important thing, though, probably, is um, before we even touch the computer, I've got to get some data off of the off of the current drive. My goal here is the internal drive that's in the computer. I'm going to leave intact. I'm not going to touch. That's my back out plan. That's if it all goes wrong. If something bad happens uh, along the way, I've still got that original drive with all that data on it, and I've got my backup. So there's my two um, there's my two um, levels of resilience in terms of messing about with this. Um, I've got this thing here, which is uh, I've borrowed it from work actually. It's a, a disk duplicator, but basically what it does, if you connect it to USB, then a, the drive or drives that you put in here will be accessible as volumes on the computer. Um, so I'm going to use that to um, actually um, both install the operating system on the new drive and to transfer all the data. So that's going to take some time because it's only USB 3, so it's not going to be the fastest uh, thing to transfer um, 100 odd gig or 960 odd gig. So we'll see how that goes. I'm not, I'm not sh quite sure how far we'll get um, this afternoon. This may well have to be left tonight. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll time it and see what, uh, see what it looks like. So that's all the bits we're going to use. Um, let me uh, reposition the camera now and, uh, and we'll hook up this thing and see if we can get the volumes um, or see if we can get the disks uh, visible on the computer so we can format them and do the, do the things we need to do with them. Okay, so I think the, um, the first thing we'll do is we'll install, get, get a, a clean operating system onto, um, onto this drive. So um, the, the basic, uh, what's the process we're going to go through? We're going get, to get the operating system on here. Then we're going to get this drive format, uh, this this uh, data drive format. So we'll have the two drives in good shape and make sure this is bootable. And um, for those of you who don't know, these sort of modern, more modern computers, I can't remember the acronym to describe it, but basically we can boot off of uh, a USB drive, which means we should be able to format this, put an operating system onto it, and then uh, boot from it. So uh, let's uh, let's let's start by doing that. Um, yeah, just plugging that. There's a power switch on the back here, so just plugging the SSD drive in there. I've already connected it to the USB port on the back of the computer. I'm powering it up, there's a power light here. And we'll have a look at the disk utility. Hopefully, you should be able to see it. Oh, 
Okay, so it's actually popped up here and it said that um, the, um, it says here the disk you inserted is not readable by this computer. It's given me an option to initialize. I want to do this uh, in, my, in the way that I want to do it, so I'm going to say ignore. Um, I'm not going to eject it here. So there you go, you can see, let me just zoom the, the camera in there, it can see the disk. Okay, it, it can see the disk there. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go on and uh, create a partition and choose the partition layer. Well, I want a single partition on this drive um, and uh, I'll call this um, new boot. Like this, just uh, so, and it's a Mac OS extended journaled partition and I'm going to allocate all of the space which is 250 gigs to that so we're going to uh, and I'm also on options just to make sure that um, it's a GUID partition table that's required um, we don't need a master boot record because of the way the the, the system works here um, so let's just uh, apply that and uh, that's going to create a partition. Uh, just a word, just before we do that, a word of warning, don't do it on your main boot drive. Obviously, make sure that you know exactly which disk you're messing about with here, because it's pretty unconditional when it does this sort of stuff. If it's, uh... Anyway, we're going to partition this drive, so it's off, off doing that now. Okay, so that's, uh, that's now um, uh, partitioned. You can see I've got a new boot uh, partition OS, uh, which means now I should find in Finder, uh, there you go, there's my new uh, clean drive. It's just just coming up. There's my new clean drive there with no content on it. Yeah, just just an empty drive. Okay, so uh, you can see the the backup still running there. Anyway, we that, that's fine. So the next thing you want to do um, now by default, uh, let's just open this up. By default, um, when you install an operating system on these Macs, the um, o, the OS installer is actually um, removed from the system. So you need to go into the um, app store and you need to re-download it and I've already done that it's uh, 1.4 gigs in size and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run that installer uh, that, that'll end up in the um... oh and this is uh, OS, OS um, X 10.8 so it's Mountain Lion that I'm, I'm doing this on um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use the installer and you can see uh, it, it asks you to agree to terms which is easy enough and you can see there that it's showing my main hard disk. I clearly don't want to install on that because I'm going to destroy my computer. So I can select, I can show all disks and you can now see that I can see this USB drive. So I'm going to select that. Um, now, because, it's, because this is a, a super user um, act, action, I need to put in my um, credentials. Uh, so there you go. So I selected the, the OS and it's now going to um, go off and, boot and uh, install that. It's saying... Uh, uh, about three minutes uh, remaining. So what it's doing is installing the basics that it needs on the SSD drive. Um, and uh, once it's done that, I'll, I'll come back so we can see what happens next. Okay, so the, um, the it's completed the installation now and um, the computer now wants to restart. Um, so it's going to restart itself. I'm not going to touch it. Uh, I'm just going to let, um, let it do what it needs to do. Um, I think I think by default when you do this, it will set the um, startup disk to the um, external drive here. So it should boot uh, off of this um, this SSD now without me actually doing anything. Um, it, if you want to switch between those drives, I believe you you just press and we'll try it later on. But you just press and hold the um, at the Apple key. You can see my reflection there. there you very cool. Um, you just press and hold the uh, Apple key uh, at boot up, and it will um, it will um, uh, prompt you then to um, to pick which drive to boot from. We'll try that later, so we can see that working. Let's just make sure you can see the whole screen here. Okay, so just to recap that part, we just ran the OS installer and um, installed it directly onto this SSD drive here, and um, it rebooted itself when it when it completed the first part of the install, 
Um, and as I say, I think the uh, the default boot disk, there we go. So it, it knows what it's doing. It hasn't, uh, hopefully this is not going to destroy the internal disk. I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Okay, so it's uh, giving us um, about 21 minutes there. So uh, I, won't, I won't subject you to watching the really exciting pro progress bar. I'll, um, I'll pause the camera and come back when that gets near the end. Okay, so uh, there's about a minute, uh, a minute to go. Uh, I'm expecting once it's finished, it should um, reboot um, and hopefully boot into the new. Um, sorry about the zooming. I was looking at the wrong screen there. Boot into the new operating system on that SSD drive. So let's see how that uh, how that goes. Okay, OSX was installed on your new boot disk. Your computer must restart in order to complete the installation. Uh, so let's give that a restart. Okay, so the fact it's booted to that, that screen actually means that it's, it's not booted to my um, internal drive. It's actually bought, booted to this new drive, so that's great. So let's just uh, get this basic set up. Now this um, transfer information is this Mac. Now, you know, from a Mac, another Mac, from another disk, not now. I'm gonna say not now. Um, uh, don't need location, oh, just enable location. Uh, I'm gonna skip the uh, connecting to Apple's um, uh, cloud service for now. I'm gonna to agree to all the license terms. Okay. I can reset all this later. Okay, so this is creating uh, my default account on my operating system. Uh, set this to London. What was that? Okay, you know what? I'm going to skip this. This is just asking me to register. I'm already registered. I don't need to do that. Okay, fantastic. So, so there we are, booted off of the um, off of this uh, drive here. And if I go into Finder, then I should see the original disk with all my data on it. So this is the boot OS. This is what this is what we booted to. And this is the internal disk with all the, the original stuff. Okay, so that's, that, that's good. The next thing to do now is to um, restart it and boot back into the original one. So obviously now with this disk removed, hopefully it's gonna boot back to my original drive. That's what I would expect. Oh, I hope I haven't bricked my Mac. <laughs> I can hear the disc rattling away, um, rattling away as it's starting. So I presume it's uh, it's booting now. Now, in terms of um, restoring from the um, the um, time capsule, I'm pretty sure I can't just do that straight away because it will try and put all my data back on here. I, pre I presume it does some kind of. Uh, I'm not quite sure how it does. What I'm hoping is going to happen. Uh, what we're going to do next now is um, uh, we're going to uh, get get my data my user my user folder data um, there we go uh, so. good so i'm back on my existing disk that's good so the app the mac isn't bricked so that's a that's a good starting point um so what i'm going to do is um get my user data um onto onto this drive now um so i've got the operating system drive there now um the way in which I have to do that uh, is I ha actually have to create a, a different admin account because, of course, my user drive is is going to be locked, um, or you know, it's going to be it's going to be in use because I've logged in and uh, I could I could do 
uh, lots of damage. What I don't want to do with the time capsule is just re restore because I don't think it will restore. It will try and put everything on here. Once I've used the mover data, moved the user data here and then booted off of this drive and pointed it um, at this, hope, um, my, pointed my profile at the new drive that contains my user profile data, then um, the um, uh, the backup, the restore, hopefully will work. If not, my worst case scenario is I ended up with, end up with a clean operating system version uh, with all my data in there. So first thing we need to do to do that is I'm going to sign out um, of me. I've already created, uh, I have a, a, another account on here, an admin level account, which I've created uh, called admin. So I'm just going to uh, log into that. Okay. Now, uh, by logging into that, that should leave my um, my um, my home directory. So, if we go into this, is a lot of messing about. So, I'll try and edit this video down as best I can. Uh, if I go into applications, utilities. Pull up a terminal window. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, OS X is actually underneath the hood, un under the hood. It's actually uh, a variant of uh, BSD, um, BSD Linux. So on the root of uh, my primary volume here, uh, ls. Oh. getting all the passwords okay so um, you can see there um, this wasn't really meant to be a, a Linux less uh, a Unix lesson but let's just cover that uh, I've just done uh, s sudo uh, super user do which which is basically letting uh, telling the operating system to let me execute privileged commands ls is a directory and slash users is where the user accounts are and um, what I'm interested in is um, that folder because that's got all my all my data in it now as I'm and basically that's what I've got to copy over to the new drive so first things first uh, let's see if we can get this uh, new drive um, mounted and uh, see if we can format it and see it as a volume okay so there's the drive, two terabyte uh, Western Digital, low power. Now I'm just gonna, okay. sorry, I'll just move the camera around. Right, so hopefully that fits in there. We'll power it up. Oh, there you go. Uh, disk inserted was not readable by this computer. I'm gonna do ignore again. I'm going to go into Disk Utility. Uh, there we go, we can see it there. So same thing again, I want to create a single partition on it. So uh, I'm going to lay out uh, one partition. I'm going to call that um, User Data. Uh, Mac OS Extended Journaled, uh, size is two terabytes. I'm going to apply that, create a partition. Oh, look at all them digits. Lots and lots and lots of bytes. My very first hard disk, uh, for what it's worth, was actually 20 megabytes. So uh, it was, uh, where it says 98 there, it was 20, comma, uh, 20 something there. Well, I have how things have moved on. Right, okay, so that, that, that looks good. So that data's, uh, uh, that, sorry, that partition is there. So uh, the next thing I want to do is um, transfer all the data over. Let me just uh, zoom out the camera again. I'm going to transfer all the data and um, and we'll we'll see if we can get some sense of how long that's going to take. Okay, I found this really useful document um, on, on the web on um, Tuts Plus T U T S Plus, uh, written by uh, John Merrick. So thanks, John. Really useful. Uh, called relocate your uh, home folder to another drive, and uh, it suggests using a command which I've not come up come across before. Um, which is somewhere down here called Ditto, uh, which um, uh, basically copies source to destination. So 
Uh, if we look at the, um, just on the Mac, um, again, very, very quick lesson. There's two root folders of interest here. The, fir the first one is users, so uh, we which we talked about before. Um, so you can see there my, my user um, folder here, which I'm interested in moving. And it's in the users folder off the root, capital U. Um, and then there's also one called volumes, and these are the two volumes. So this is my old hard disk, and this is the new user data hard disk that we've just created, so the two terabyte one, and um, um, formatted. So what I want to do is um, so I create a folder called users, and then I want to do minus V, which gives some status information, so users... So I want to take my um, user profile um, folder and I want to copy that to okay so that's copying data I'm not 100% sure I've got that right let me just uh, so the way to check that I'm just going to create a, a second window and I'm going to have a look at So, uh, yep. Okay, so that's uh, that's now copying. Now I have no idea how long that's going to take. I'll have to time that. I'll pause the computer and see if I can uh, do some do some samples. But anyway, there's no point in us watching any more video um, while we just sit here and watch that copy. That's got uh, 960 uh, megabytes of uh, content to copy over there. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, it's over USB three, so it's not going to be lightning fast. Okay, just uh, while that's copying, the, uh, a fairly uh, fairly quick and simple way of um, working out. Um, I've just done. A, I'm just doing this command, which is df, which stands for disk free, uh, minus h for human readable numbers, and uh, just looking at the root of the user data volume, the new volume which we're creating, and uh, you can see here uh, it's two terabytes in size. Five gigs is currently used. Uh, available is two capacity one percent. Uh, so we can keep on watching that. You should see uh, that, that should, uh, there you go, it's just increased to 5.3. So uh, I'll keep on watching that and uh, we'll see how we get on. 5.3.5.4. Um, uh, I'll, I'll do some timing now and I'll, I'll work out how long it's going to take. Anyway, uh, I will come back on camera as soon as this is done or nearing completion. Okay, so uh, I've just let that run for five minutes and checked. It started off at seven gig and it uh, got to 15 gigs. So um, it's doing about eight gigs every five minutes. Uh, that's gonna take absolutely forever. Um, so I've been thinking about that while I've been watching that. And I think what I'm gonna do is stop this now. Um, if you recall, I said I had a full backup um, on, the, um, on the time machine. So what I'm gonna try, I think, is um, now, now um, put the two drives into the computer um, boot it off the new operating system and, and then I'm going to uh, run the migration utility. Uh, sorry, I'll boot it off the new operating system, then I'll switch the um, user account over to, um, um, to get its home drive from this second drive and then I'm going to try and use the migration utility and hopefully it'll put it all back, uh, put it all back exactly as, uh, as it was uh, before I started but across, uh, sp spread across the two drives. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to abort that uh, copy and uh, clean that drive again, just delete the partition on the, uh, on the drive and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come back now when, um, and we'll look at the computer itself. Okay, so uh, the first thing we'll do, uh, I've powered that down now. Um, the first thing we'll do is we'll get the computer. Let me just disconnect all the uh, various cables. It's all the test equipment, network, and God knows what else. Okay, so uh, for those of you who don't know the construction of these things, they're um, they're pretty pretty narrow. Uh, they're quite compact. This is a, a slightly older model of um, of the newer ones are out, which are even thinner now. Um, but basically, the way they they come apart is they come apart at the front, and uh, basically this uh, perspex front here um, is basically held on inside with magnets. It's literally as simple as that. 
So uh, all we have to do, uh, now what they recommend is you use suction uh, things, but I'm not, I haven't got any of those. Uh, I'm gonna use a, just a blade. And uh, all you have to do, just carefully, without destroying your Mac, is just, just pop that blade just, in, just on the corner there in between um, the, the perspex and the, and the rear panel and give it a pull with your nail. Um, it's quite tough. So it feels like it's gonna break, but it's not, it's just the magnets coming apart. And once you've got that open, it literally drops out like that. So it can be done without doing any damage whatsoever. Now, what I would say is um, these things do get dusty um, and I'm probably gonna give that a dust down. But what I've set up over here, and just so you can see, uh, I've literally uh, got a stand there and I've got um, uh, just a clean um, cloth. This is actually a backdrop for a, for a photographic um, stand. But anyway, I'm just gonna put that there um, so it's uh, nicely out of the way. And uh, dust can't fall on it. I've got it facing up, so uh, as would normally be facing out. So the next thing to do is uh, remove the screen. Now I've, I've not done any of this before, so I'm only going by what I've seen. Um, now the, the obvious thing is uh, there is a thing to know about these panels. If you get your fingerprints on them, your oil from your fingers is actually very, very hard to clean. So uh, I wanna try and uh, be careful uh, not to do that. Um, as best I, as best I'm aware, there's some four millimeter Torx uh, screws here which hold this display in. And uh, I've just gotta, just gotta remove those. I'm just trying to see where they are. Okay, let me just get a Torx uh, screwdriver. Okay, so from what I can tell, there's four Torx screws. There's one, two, three, and four. Down, uh, sorry, I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, there's one here, one here, one here, and one here. Uh, there se seems to be some at the top. I'm not sure if they're actually holding um, holding the display, and I don't think they are. Um, this is a camera, so there's screws here holding the camera in. And there's um, there's four more over here. One, two, three, four. So let's just remove those and see how we you'll get on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the camera down. Uh, I'm going to lay the monitor down. So let me reposition the camera once I've done this. I suspect that's probably the right way to do it. Okay, these um, these jump out and jump on the magnets that actually hold the front screen in. Let me here. Uh, It looks like these top ones, maybe not. Okay, let me just have a look at that. Second. Okay, I've, I've repositioned that a bit. Um, so this looks like uh, it comes out there. Just lift it out both sides. And down it comes. Now there's a, there's a small cable in here. Um, which seems to enter the screen at the top, so that's got to be unplugged. These cables here are very thin. Um, the cables are also stuck with tape. Not quite sure I can see how that one comes out. quite see how that one comes out. Let me move the uh, monitor again. Okay, I just had a couple of quick, uh, a, a couple of looks on uh, YouTube. I couldn't really see how um, how it's done, but I just had a, a play around here. And uh, basically this cable here, which I've just connected, um, disconnected, I don't know if we can, we can see that. Let me just get the camera positioned slightly. Um, okay, so this cable here, which is somewhere around about here, uh, the way to get it out is just to um, to press press these two um, things here, and that that disconnects that nicely. So that's that one out. Um, there appears to be a small two wire. Uh, 
Uh, I'm going to try and bring the camera in here again, actually, so you can see in more detail. Okay, so uh, there's basically four wires. This was one of them. This one was another one. It was just up here. And uh, there's this small one here, which looks like uh, just a two wire. I guess that's some kind of temperature sensor. And it just unplugs from there. Man, these connectors are small. And then there's one over here. Let's uh, pull that over. There's one over here, which has just got a, a release there. So I think, I think that's all the wires. There we go. Okay, so that's the screen now. I'm trying really hard not to touch the actual screen. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, reposition the camera and I'll show you what I'm going to do with the screen. Okay, so uh, back over here, what I'm going to do is just put this, um, this front plate underneath, just underneath one layer. And then the, the screen here, I'm just going to uh, lay down on here. That's it. That should keep. All right. So, um, so this is uh, this is my first look at the inside of one of these 27 Max, uh, 27 inch Max. So, uh, if you haven't seen it before, you're seeing it at exactly the same time as me. Um, so, speaking of dust, there is a little bit of dust around here. So, I'm going to take the opportunity to give this a bit of a clean out. Um, I have no idea what all these components are, but I think we can make some guesses. Over here, um, this was this was powering the screen. Oh, this was connecting to the screen. Um, so I, I, I'm guessing that lot there is looking, by looking at these connectors here, I would say is the power supply. Um, that would seem to make sense. There's a dirty great big heat sink here. So I would suggest that's the, uh, the CPU uh, cooler. And there's a fan down here. And I can see uh, just in here, I'm not sure if you can see that. Let's see if I can get that around. Um, there are copper heat pipes. So I suspect this is the CPU around here. This is the heat sink and the heat transfer is taken through these, uh, these pipes here. They've put a lot of engineering in here to, to make, this, make this this small. It's, it's quite amazing really. So, uh, so I would suggest this is the, the main system board down here. Um, this, 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 what's this? So that's the display that drives the um, uh, that, that's the display connector, the big display connector there. So I presume that's the, uh, the actual display serial data. Uh, this, this board here looks like it's got heat sinks at the back here. And so that almost certainly is a graphics card. Uh, DVD writer, again, interestingly, here's another cooler up here. And, and again, in here, I can see heat pipes coming down to this lot. So if you, if you look there, there's a, there's a big um, processor there. It might be the other way around. There's a big processor there. Um, uh, loads and lo I mean that's, you know, that's unbelievable density there. That's uh, that's the graphics controller I'm going to guess. So so there's the graphics controller here. Here we've got um, this looks like uh, these are antennas up here. There's one there and this this one goes off somewhere somewhere else. And you can see these RF connectors. So I'm guessing that's our Wi-Fi. Um, there's another there's another module over here. Um, again RF looking device much smaller one wire so i'm going to guess that that's the bluetooth could be the other way around i don't i don't really know uh, this is the camera uh, what else is here that, that's that's about uh, that's about it so the thing we're interested in there's two there's there's two things we'll note the first thing is here's the hard drive and um we've got to get a i'm going to take some photographs of this now because i want to i want to make sure that all these all these wires and cables all route back in the same place as we had them because it's obviously very very important um to make sure that all goes back in its original state I'll take some photographs though just before i do that so this is the hard disk this is what we want to swap out now uh from from looking around on youtube i know that there are there isn't a place to put a second hard drive and um this this here um is a is a vent and I'm guessing that's for cooling the hard drive, so we can't really interfere with that. But I think what's normally done is there is some space just, just under here. 
and uh, I believe that what's normally done is the SSD drive is somehow mounted under there. This has to come out and I'm almost certain that this mainboard has to come out because we need to get a second SATA connector on there. So uh, I won't know that. I'm going to take the hard drive out first and then see what, uh, see what we do from there. So that, that's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take some photographs then I'll, uh, I'll start removing parts and we'll come back on camera. Okay, so uh, I've got some photographs. So the first thing to do is take the hard disk out. I'm going to remove these, um, these two Torx M4 screws. And clearly I want to be very careful here that I don't drop any screw into the computer, that looks the same as the ones that are holding the display in, that's handy. Actually, I'm going to take that back by a very small margin. Um, those screws are slightly bigger than the uh, screws that are used to hold the display in. They're just a slightly longer screw, so I'll keep them separate. I'll just, I'll just double check that just to make sure. Okay. So this is obviously the drive that I want to, uh, uh, this is my, my backup to make, make sure that uh, if anything goes wrong, uh, I've still got my data. Um, got that safe. Uh, I've got to move, there's some, these brackets need to be taken off, as do these, um, these screws. So I'll transfer those over to the new drive once, uh, once I've just checked everything for dimensions and everything. Right, so that's, uh, next thing to do is work out um, where these cables run to. And uh, yeah, by the looks of it, it's uh, underneath the uh, the main board. So I need to uh, have a look and see how that how that comes out. One of the things I will definitely have to do is uh, remove the two uh, RAM chips from here um, because they I know that they plug into the motherboard. That should be quite an easy easy task. Ooh, lots of dust build up in there. Okay, there's a, looks like uh, I've done an upgrade on that. They look like they're different, uh, different models there. Let's come over here. So, each one of these uh, memory modules is uh, four gig. Now, for those of you that uh, are watching um, watching me do this and uh, screaming, "Where's my anti-static uh, precautions?" It's a fair it's a fair comment to make. Um, just just a, a point on anti-static, though. It is reasonably safe to handle um, uh, static sensitive devices in this way. But you've got to be very conscious that um, you equalise your your um, your potential. So even if the whole thing's charged, as long as you and it are at the same potential, um, you're actually okay. You can't really cause any damage. Now, the uh, the way what you've got to be a hundred percent sure of though is that before you touch anything, you always ground yourself. You always touch the computer. Touch in this case, it's quite easy. It's a metal chassis, but you always touch something before you go ha manhandling the electronics. And obviously, once you're in an anti-static bag, we've got a Faraday cage around that, so that's that's safe enough to move around. Uh, so just bear that in mind if you, um, you know, absolutely feel free to use the anti-static um, um, uh, protection. I tend not to, um, uh, but I tend to be very conscious of the fact that I need to, you know, equalise uh, me and the equipment that I'm working on before I, before I go touching. So there's a, there's a quick fast tip for you if, uh, if you want. Obviously, if you're doing this in a professional environment or with other people's equipment, you probably ought to take a little bit more care. But, um, you know, I've, not, I've, I've been messing about with this stuff for, I don't know, 25 years and I've never yet damaged something using with static. So, uh, so that maybe says something. Uh, I'm just going to remove the, um, the DVD drive. I'm just wondering, I'm, I was looking here, there's heat sinks on the, on the back of this board here. So I don't really want to put the drive in there if I can avoid it. And I was just looking at here and I'm hoping that there might be enough space actually underneath this, behind this, to actually get the second drive in. So uh, I'm just going to uh, lift out this uh, DVD uh, reader writer. Hopefully, now that screw is exactly the same size as the ones that hold the hard disk in, so that's uh, that's good. Ah, nearly, 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 nearly. Um, I clearly don't want to drop any screws into this computer because I'm never going to get them out again. Uh, or you know, I'll have to strip the thing right down to get them out.
I've just noticed and there's some some discoloration there, but when I when I touched it, it feels exactly like um, uh, silicon grease. So I don't think there's anything to worry about. It's, uh, hopefully, it should be free to come out. And that actually looks pretty good. Um, that looks like there's plenty of space in there to uh, let's have a look to get that SSD drive in. And interestingly enough, ah, so this is the airflow. Ah, hmm, hmm, maybe. Let's have a look. Yeah. So what I can, from what I can tell, um, this is a this is a fan here. And uh, once this uh, DVD is, is put here, you can see there's foam here. Uh, that uh, kind of creates a, 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 an air channel or a vent which, uh, which is forcing air from this fan up and through this, uh, this heat sink here and out at the top grills. Um, so, uh, but in terms of all the space, the only place I can find to fit that drive uh, looks like it's there. Now it's quite thin. And it still leaves, um, you know, a good, a good, um, a good amount of space for airflow. So that looks like um, that's going to be the uh, the best position, the best fit there. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, <coughs> some double-sided tape or some um, some um, secure way to fix that um, to stop it from um, what we don't want it doing in there is that. Uh, clearly, if it uh, if it ends up doing that, it could block the airflow. So we want that fixed pretty pretty well to the uh, to the back here. And of course, it's a curved. This is a curved um, surface here, so we'll have to be quite um, quite careful about how we uh, how we fix that and make sure it's fixed. Okay, so now we know how to uh, where we're going to put the drive. The next thing is to figure out how to get a SATA cable off the back of the board. Um, and uh, for that, I think the main board has to now come out of the unit. Okay, so uh, these um, this board seems to be fixed in at least at these ends on on kind of spring clips. Uh, so I'm guessing that um, start to stack these screws here now, so I know where they come from. Uh, that's kind of thermal expansion relief because of this uh, metal chassis here. These two metal chassis. Subchassis that seem to be holding the board in. So the screws I'm going to start removing are the ones where they've got a bigger, um, I'm guessing. The ones that, uh, if you see, let me zoom the camera in. Sorry if I'm making you seasick. Uh, there we go. These these kind of ones with these white outlines around them. Um, that's the the screw that's coming out. Uh, so I think that's uh, that's it. So I'll count the screws once I've I'll, I'll get this out and then I'll I'll count the screws. So if you're doing it yourself, you'll know how many and what to look for. Now there's a warranty void if removed sticker here. So I'm guessing. Now on this screw here, there's a small arrow pointing to it, so I'm hoping that's... Uh... Ah! Fortunately it's gone where I can see it. start um, removing these boards because I think this needs some space to come out. Hopefully I haven't got that wrong. That looks like the uh, power supply board for the display as we talked about before. Nothing on there that's of specific interest. Some inductors, some switches and some control circuitry. It's a fairly typical switch mode DC to DC type buck or boost converters. Okay, the two, two screws that have come out of these two positions here are, are different to anything else that's come up before this. Looks like this is going into the actual aluminium, they're threaded. So, 
This looks like the uh, mains input. And uh, this looks like the main power board. Power supply board, uh, fairly, uh, fairly typical of uh, a computer power supply. Obviously custom built specifically for this job. Yep, nothing there, a couple of transformers, one, one will be a choke probably. Transformer, some switching devices, rectifiers, bolt caps, quite a lot of dust. Now what I'm going to do, just to make this easier to put back together, I'm going to just leave the screws actually in, um, in the places they came out of. Oops, drop the bit. Um, there's a little bit of uh, not quite sure what it is down here. Um, something to do with uh, yeah, it just it just sort of slots in there. Um, it's on, on the wires there. I think I'll just leave that. That dangling there. This connector here looks like it's um, this is the audio and microphone input uh, connectors, which seem to be fixed to the chassis. Uh, so that's what that connector there is. And I fear all of these things are going to have to be disconnected one by one. Okay, so this what this connector here is marked skin temp. So this is obviously a temperature sensor uh, put at the top of the um, aluminium here um, to allow it uh, to sense the, t the overall temperature of the case. Obviously heat rises, so up the top will be the best place to do that. that makes sense. Uh, this connector here um, appears to go to this Wi-Fi module, so it's going to come out. Okay, interesting. I'm quite sure how they. Looks like that just snaps on. Get that out of the way. Now this one. Can stay on there. This wire here, if you remember, was the one that went into the hard disk into this connector here. I'm not quite sure what that is. We'll look that up in a minute. Make sure the the other drive. It doesn't have that. Okay, so that's interesting. Hmm. That actually might be a problem because this, I think, uh, where does that go? Yeah, that is a problem. Um, so this connector here. Um, is wired to the main board marked HDD temp. Uh, so I'm going to have to go and have a look up and see what um, see what that is because unfortunately this drive here doesn't have the same connector. It doesn't have a temperature sensor on it. Okay, I've just uh, disconnected all these connectors. I've uh, had a look at the um, temperature sensor. We'll come back to that. Um, I think there's a way uh, to work around that, but anyway, we'll, we'll come back to that afterwards. I'm not too worried about it at the moment. So just getting this board out. Um, so all the connectors have disconnected. Uh, it's not easy to put the wrong connectors back, so uh, I think that's okay. And I've taken some photographs as well, of course. Uh, this board down here, by the way, is an infrared uh, sensor. I think that's what the, the infrared um, can get through this Apple logo. So that's how, how that works, the infrared remote control. Yep, this feels like it wants to come out, but hmm. And by the looks of that, there doesn't seem to be a spare place for a SATA connector. I need to get these cables off and have a closer look at that. Let me just disconnect this. Okay, so uh, I've had a look at this, uh, had a quick Google around again, and um, you know, lo and behold, there you go, great, typical Apple. Uh, they would seem to have um, a, SART, a place for a, a second SATA port. So this one's used for the DVD writer. This one's used for the, the primary hard disk. Um, 
and uh, this one hasn't been installed and reading on there I think some people have actually tried to just install um, a connector uh, but there are other components missing and um, probably there's the, the, the Southbridge chip probably also doesn't have that enabled so I'm not going to even bother trying doing that. What I think I'm going to do, or at least I'm going to try, uh, I don't really need the DVD writer. Um, I don't. I, I, I very rarely use this. And of course a DVD reader writer can easily be connected via USB or Firewire at least if I need to. So uh, I think I'm going to leave that disconnected um, and I'm going to install um, uh, the, uh, the hard drive um, on the uh, on the SATA port that's destined for this. Um, interestingly enough, I found on here that uh, there's also a temperature sensor for the DVD ROM, and that seems to be stuck on. So hopefully, I can uh, I can figure out what that is, that component, and then uh, make up something for the other hard disk. Anyway, that's what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to try and put it put it back together now and um, connect the um, the SATA drive um, to here. So I've got this uh, SATA cable. And uh, fortunately, that does appear to fit. That just it's going to pop on there. <coughs> and the SATA connector for the hard drive, I'll uh, I'll, I'll plug in. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to try and do that now, and then uh, uh, put the put the main board back in, reconnect all the connectors, but with this uh, second SATA cable brought out. What I am going to do is. Um, on here, I'm going. This was the primary hard disk, so I'm going to run um, the, that to the on this. Use this red, red cable for that, and then I'm going to run the um, the actual um, internal, the primary drive off this secondary where the CD-ROM was. That'll be the data drive. So we'll see how that works, if at all. Okay, so the uh, the board's back in, and I've got this uh, connected to the uh, um, primary SATA port. I'll just put that connector on there. Um, I've got that connected to the um, primary SATA port and I've got this one connected to where what used to be connected to the DVD. Um, now this is the power connector for the um, primary drive. So what I've got is I've got this, uh, um, I've got these from Maplins actually in the UK here. Um, it's just a power splitter to two SATA drives and then this end is an adapter uh, which plugs into here. Um, and uh, gets the so that should get us power for both drives now uh, obviously power requirements are important here um, because the um, ho hopefully um, this will have enough power to run the SSD as well I don't think the um, SSD drive is uh, particularly excessive power wise but uh, that's what we're going to use so next thing I've got to do is get these uh, these cables into into this area here without um, without um, uh, affecting the airflow so I'll, I'll do that next and come back on camera once I've done it. Okay so uh, I've got these cables in here what I've done is I've put the uh, the power connector in here there's a small bit of space here so that's sitting in there um, I've run this power connector in this uh, ready for this um, the data drive and um, underneath here there's basically um, a foam strip which is designed to um, uh, seal the air at the back of this and the back of that heatsink is actually just flat aluminium so what I've done is I've run the two flat cables um, underneath that um, so once that sits in place it just um, skews it a very very tiny bit but it definitely uh, it seems to pretty much uh, seal off the um, thing and the, um, the cables just indent into the actual um, foam behind the uh, behind the heatsink so I think that's that's pretty good right I'm going to assemble this now uh, get it back to the point where the screen's in and everything's reconnected um, and um, get the hard drives in here and then we'll deal with the temperature sensor and just so you can see there the uh, the, the SATA drive is um, the, sorry the SSD drive is sitting just in there that's quite nice I've got to stick that down which I'll do in a second but uh, yeah that, that sits in there quite nicely and um, the DVD drive sits in there with no obstruction at all still leaving the um, the airflow uh, plenty of gap with the airflow good okay so here's everything back together I've just fitted the uh, brackets on the drive transferred this uh, EMC um, uh, pad and also these two connectors so should be able to put the drive in now 
Yeah, which, which also fits in there nicely. I'll just screw those, screw those in. Okay, the thing to deal with next is this uh, temperature sensor. Now on the um, old drive, um, the one that was actually shipped with the Apple, there's this four pin connector here, which this, this plugs into. And um, it's obviously the, uh, it's marked here HDD temp on the actual motherboard. So this is obviously a temperature sensor. So the question is, what is that? And uh, fortunately, and I'm gonna guess it's the same, we've got, uh, we've got a, a temperature sensor here. This plugs in and this is the, um, yeah, it plugs in here somewhere and it's called the, uh, where was that? Somewhere in here. It's called the OOD. Uh, where was this? It's over here somewhere. Uh, OOD temp, the connector is right down here. So, um, so I'm going to guess, I mean, the only thing, you know, the, the white, the colours are the same, um, black and grey. I'm going to guess it's the same. So if we have a look under this here, what we've got, I don't know how well I'll be able to zoom in, but we'll see here. Uh, what we've got here is a sim, sim, single device marked as Q1. And uh, so I'm going to guess that that's just a silicon um, sensor. I'm just going to get a meter and we'll just check, we'll just uh, make 100% sure that's the case. Um. Okay, so we're we're on diode check right here. I'm just going to go across these two terminals. Okay, so 0.63, uh, that's pretty conclusive, that's a diode. Um, the um, positive here is going to the black lead, so um, um, the black lead is the anode and the grey lead is the cathode. So one thing I can do is I can double check that. If we take this hard drive and take the original cable, just plug it in here, uh, we should get a similar effect. This is on the hard drive. It's not quite the same. 0.9 doesn't quite read like a diode. And 0.4, uh, have I done that the same way? In a second. Hmm. Okay. So that's not actually conclusive. Um, they, they certainly seem to be reading differently, but I'm going to take a chance, I think. And uh, they're using the same connector. So I think what I'm going to do is um, see if I can remove this temperature sensor off here and see if I've got enough. Uh, actually, I'll leave that on here. I think what I'll do is I'll just modify this cable um, and I'll fit a um, just a transistor. Uh, base emitter, MPN base emitter uh, junction to this and um, glue that or fix that somehow to the surface of the hard drive. I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, uh, completely reversible mod. What I've done is um, just taken a, an MPN transistor, put the base emitter junction, uh, cut the third leg off the collector, um, put the base emitter junction into the first two pins um, and uh, just checked that that adds up the same as the, or, or it com comes out the same as the um, the DVD drive, 6.5, 0 0.65, sorry. Okay, so I've got everything connected. I've just given the, the screen a wipe and a dust down. Um, get all the dust off, there's quite a lot of dust here. Um, so this is it, I've got the power, I've got an ethernet um, cable connected and power connected 
And then we're going to power it up now and see, uh, hopefully I haven't bricked it and it's all going to work. Okay, I can hear fan. Uh, no display. Sound. Ooh. Ah, okay, good, good. I, I very rarely power the thing on from cold. I turn it on um, from standby normally. Um, hopefully this is actually gonna boot now. <coughs> Not sure why the camera defocuses there. It's very really strange. Zoom out a bit. Yeah, I need something to focus on. Okay, so this is the um, the, the login from the new the new drive. So that looks like that's working. And uh, yeah, this is looking good. So if we go into uh, applications, accessories, <coughs> uh, sorry, utilities, into uh, disk tool, if I can find it. Utilities, disk utility, and there we go. Great, we can see the uh, the drive, the user data drive, and we can see the new boot OS. Okay, so um, I think the next thing to do now, um, I've obviously logged in as me, and I don't have any of my data or desktop or anything. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is try and um, try and um, well, I've got to I've got to reset basically set my home directory to the to the data drive there so if I go on here right then so uh, the first thing to do I think um, I'm going to try and rebase the um, move my user data on the account that I'm actually logged in so obviously I can't do that what I'm going to need to do is create a new administration account a temporary one just go and do that um, Uh, so add a new account, uh, new account type administrator, I'll call it admin, admin will do. Okay, and then I want to um, log out of here and log in as admin. This is a new account. Now, I should be able to uh, run a command window somewhere. Oh, I can do this here. So I'm going to create a new folder on the um, user data. Um, uh, user data folder. Um, Called users. And that's my folder from the old drive, so it's the same. This is what happens when you're used to DOS and uh, Windows. And... Yep, so there's a, there's a directory. Okay, so that's, uh, that's okay there. And then I think if we go into system preferences, users and groups go to right click on the account I want to change hmm. 
Uh. Okay. Uh, I haven't got right right click mouse options uh, enabled, so I've had to press and hold the control key while clicking on it. So I'm going to advanced options. And now we should be able to change my home directory uh, away from... Okay. Okay, so I want to do Okay, so that's now uh, that's the current working directory is volumes, user data, users, Jerry Sweeney, and I've now got the uh, the, the default um, folders on there. So I'm just going to log out and log in as Jerry Sweeney and just make sure that works. Uh, oh, and I probably ought to... Okay, so I've made a copy of the um, folder. I've deleted the one in the on the local SSD drive. So if I log out admin, log back in as Jerry Sweeney, everything should work. Okay, I just uh, messed about a bit. I've made a minor change just to simplify the um, paths to make them simpler. So I've called the volume. Uh, I've called the actual two terabyte volume users, and then I've just created the folder uh, Jerry Sweeney as the user in there, and then I've copied the uh, the user profile in there. So hopefully now uh, I should be able to log in as uh, Jerry Sweeney, and uh, that should all work. Just have a look, quick look here. Um, so my home directory is. Oh, okay. No, I haven't. I've, I need to reset the home directory. I'll just go and do that one. So. Yeah. Okay. So um, you can see now. I've just logged in. Uh, I've rebased the home directory, so I'm logged in as Jerry Sweeney, and uh, the volumes there uh, is volumes users, which is the two terabyte uh, uh, drive and the part single partition, and then Jerry Sweeney, which is my home drive, and that's that's working. Right, I've just um, gone and powered down. I've got two time capsules on the network. One is connected to another computer, so uh, I couldn't remember which one it was, um, and it can still see both of them. Great. Let's try that again. Yeah, this is the yeah, this is the problem. This is not going to work. You can see here if I want to restore it to the operating system. So I've got that's kind of what I thought was going to happen. Um, so I've got to stick with the um, stick with the old strategy of uh, having a newly built operating system, uh, and then okay. So I've got the uh, the hard drive. Uh, um, plugged in here, connected to the USB. I'm going to log in again as admin. Um, assuming, assuming I've got this right, this this volume. Oh, if we turn it on, now this volume should appear. Now Finder. Okay, there it is. It can see the external drive, which is great. Um, Macintosh HD, that's cool. So I 
think Okay, so all I need to do, I hope, um, so if we do uh, Macintosh.hd users slash Jerry Sweeney. So that's my old um, folder, and I want to replicate that into volumes users Jerry Sweeney okay and I'm logged in as admin here so as the admin account so that's uh, now copying so if we get a, a new window and just have a DF minus a H for human readable slash volumes slash users slash Jerry Sweeney okay so we can see it's climbing up there so uh, that's uh, that's it now I'm going to um, I'll have to leave that copy because that's going to be a whole bunch of stuff it's uh, well we 1.6 gig so far um, it's got 968 gigs to uh, to do, so I'm not sure how long it's going to take. I'm going to give it a five minute timing, uh, which I'll initiate in a minute, and then I'll come back and I'll turn the camera on again and I'll let you know how long it's going to take. Okay, so in five minutes, uh, it's managed to cop, uh, get from 2.6 gigs to 8 gigs, which is, um, uh, what's that, 5.6 gigs. So, so and and if you I've got 960 gigs, so you divide that. It's um, every five minutes, so it's going to take about 13 or 14 hours, I think, at this rate. So I'm going to leave it for another hour or two now, and then I'll come back and check it and uh, and see how much progress it's made. Okay, so here it all is all uh, back up and running. It took um, about 15 hours to copy all the data over from this uh, from this drive here. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's all back up and working. There was a few things I had to do uh, beyond what I'd already shown. Apart from copying the user data over, I, I hadn't set the privileges or the right, uh, sorry, the ownership of those files uh, back to the account Jerry Sweeney, so I had to do that. Um, and that, that uh, caused it to um, start up. I had to make a couple of other little tweaks, um, nothing specific, um, you know, nothing, nothing um, terribly onerous. Uh, just where things, um, uh, things, uh, certain uh, configurations hadn't um, taken the path or used the full path. Anyway, that's all basically working. What I'll do is I'll um, document on the actual um, web page, uh, the blog page that's that's going with this video. So you'll see the link uh, just down just down below uh, if you're watching on YouTube. I'll document the exact steps um, just so there's a kind of written record of the steps that I took to, to achieve this. Anyway, it's, it's done now. I've uh, initiated a time machine backup. You can see there it's trying to um, uh, back up about uh, 1.2 terabytes of data. Um, so it is backing up the new drive and the SSD, but uh, it's booting really nicely and, uh, and working really well. Okay, so that's it. Um, I've finally got my Mac back online now. Uh, one of the reasons why my YouTube channel have been quite uh, been quiet over the last three or four weeks is actually all the last three weeks or so is actually I haven't had the capacity on my computer to produce any video content. Um, so uh, I had to go through that process. It wasn't it wasn't the most uh, pain free uh, process. It took a fair few hours to get it all right. And uh, ho I thought I'd make this video not this strictly electronics, but I thought it might be interesting to some people. Um, anyway, it's all done now and uh, hopefully um, some people might find it useful. If you do find it useful, well first, first of all, I'll put some um, documented details. I'll try and step, write up step by step what I've done, what commands I'd used um, in terms of moving data around and that sort of thing, and the approach I took. I've no doubt there are many other ways of um, doing what I've, what I've achieved here, and I'm no expert with, um, with Apple uh, Macs. So, I've, this is the way I've decided to do it. It seemed to work okay. 
Um, if anyone, uh, if anyone obviously got any comments, feel free to uh, to comment. If there's any other useful information that I might have missed, uh, or any simpler ways of doing some of the things that I've uh, that I've had to do with this computer. Uh, anyway, if you enjoyed the video uh, or you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up, and uh, you'll be able to link to the blog page, uh, which will be just down here, at the bottom left, and um, on there, as I say, I'll write up the steps that I took um, and the various commands I used uh, in case you need to do it yourself. Okay, thanks very much for watching and I will catch you next time.